To assemble your throttle quadrant, um, the first step in the manual, and keep in mind this is the standard sling throttle quadrant with a brake lever. Um, I don't have the parts to show the uh, toe brake assembly, but uh, you'll have to follow through the manual for that. So for the standard uh, handbrake throttle quadrant, um, the first step is going to have you install your rib nuts. Uh, this part is fairly straightforward at this point. Um, we've gone through so many rib nuts. Uh, just pay attention to make sure that you're getting a nice tight fit and there's no uh, gap between the two pieces when you shoot the rib nuts through both of them on the brake section. Um, for the throttle itself, uh, what I like to do at this point of the build, I leave the cotter pin unbent uh, so that way we can make adjustments. It's a little bit difficult to get an accurate uh, gauge on how much pressure it takes to move this. Uh, we'll do that at the end once the uh, the plate is installed over everything so hold it nice and securely so we can get a good measurement on how much force the throttle requires so as you can see here we've got it all put together um, and like i said that cutter pin is in place but not yet bent for permanent installation the next step is fairly straightforward as well um, there's only a couple things to make note of and keep an eye out for um, one of them is don't forget the washers as your spacers between your, uh, your master cylinder here and your two side support channels. Um, another thing is I've gone one step ahead here to show what's going on here. Uh, at this point, obviously, things don't like to stay together for you, but for your parking brake shutoff valve, you'll need to have a 1 8 BSP die and re-tap both of these brake fittings uh, in order for them to thread into this. Uh, if you'd prefer, uh, it's fairly inexpensive to source uh, exact same valve with 1 8 NPT uh, threads already in it, in which case both of these elbows uh, will thread directly into here without needing to uh, buy a die. So realistically the price of the die and the price of the fitting itself are the same so if you'd like to outsource this that's an option as well so we're going to move to the next step here quickly so we can get everything kind of secured and mounted in place um, um, yeah another thing to make note of is there are two small discs on your brake lever and one on your throttle lever and lastly the setting for your master cylinder here needs to be, there should be just a very slight bit of almost free play. You should feel it in your master cylinder um, before it starts engaging. So when you pull it all the way through its stroke, you'll see what I'm talking about. Just a very slight bit of free play here. If you have it so that your clevis is extended too far out on the threads of your master cylinder, um, it'll be slightly engaged and your brakes will not bleed later on. So just pay attention to that now. As you can see, there's just a slight bit of free play in it and it's not completely free. There's still a little bit of resistance just because of the seals in your cylinder, but um, you'll see what I'm talking about when you feel it through the stroke. So let's move to the next step. Now we've completed the throttle and brake uh, quadrant. Uh, as you can see here, we've run the uh, short section of line from the master cylinder to the parking brake shutoff valve. Um, sometimes it helps to heat the tubing with either a heat gun or soaking it in some boiling water um, or just hot water so that you can get the flex without uh, kinking it. Uh, as you can see here, the way I have the other fittings oriented, uh, this one's going to go up to our reservoir so it's a little bit angled and it's going to go straight forward to the front of the plane where the reservoir is and this one is more or less straight down because it's going to come right up from underneath your main spar carry through and up to uh, your uh, parking brake valve here so um, as you can see 
everything is finished being assembled, uh, just remember to pop off the little cover plate on your parking brake valve uh, to access the screw in order to mount everything up inside. Um, and I think that's just about everything to be said for the throttle and brake quadrant. Uh, for now, we're just going to leave this bolt loose. Um, that's where your throttle cable is going to connect into later on, and uh, we'll address that later. So, um, oh, that's right. The last step is to adjust the pressure on your throttle lever so that we can uh, secure that, that cotter pin there. Um, the manual says uh, it's one point something pounds of force, and so you just get a, a scale and pull it. Uh, the reason for this is if it's perfectly smooth and, and almost no resistance, uh, the 915 engine has a spring on the throttle that if the throttle cable were to fail, it actually fails to full throttle on the engine. So it's a really nice feature, um, but you do need a little bit of tension on your throttle cable, uh, throttle lever in order to uh, counteract that spring force so that you're not slowly creeping up and throttle throughout the flight. So uh, once that's done, you can secure your cotter pin into place and um, everything's done and we're ready to move on. So to construct your center console, um, there's a couple of things that I like to do for this process. Um, first of all, as you can see, we've got all the riv nuts in position um, as they're supposed to be placed, but nothing yet is riveted together, including the seat rails are not yet riveted um, into the fuselage. Uh, that's because it makes it a lot easier to do the upholstery on your center console if your seat rails are not riveted yet um, inside the airplane. So. Um, as you can see here, uh, basically, when you assemble these, you'll want to countersink all of these holes on the top of this angle piece here. Um, and that's because your seat is going to slide along here. So you'll countersink everything on the top of the plastic as well as the side plastic. Um, you'll have one of these strips, and that goes to the center console on each side just to keep the seat slightly spaced out so it doesn't scrape on your center console as you slide it forward and back. Um, so once we get to this step, we test fit it all into the plane and make sure everything is good to go. And then we're gonna pull it right back out and start upholstering it. Um, if you have your upholstery kit, of course, this is a good time to do it. And if not, uh, you'll wanna wait to rivet all of this together until you have your upholstery kit. So. Let's go ahead and get it test fit right now. So here you can see the center console has been test fit into the airplane, as well as all of your side skins uh, for your uh, center channel there. So everything is fitting nicely. So the next step we're gonna do here is we're gonna pull out just the center console as you saw a minute ago and get that upholstered. Um, even after upholstery, I like to just leave it clecoed to the spar carry through and the um, flap support. Uh, it just, it becomes a modular unit and this doesn't really have a whole lot connected to it aside from uh, your headset jacks. So it makes it, and as you can see, my headset jacks have a, a disconnect here. So if I want to remove this to access the flap motor or any of the wires or anything like that, I still have that option all the way down until final assembly. So Let's get this pulled out and we'll begin the upholstery process. To begin upholstering the center console, um, the best way to do it, I think, is to get it to this stage here. So you could see the four rivet shot from the inside uh, holding the bottom of your uh, center compartment and the two going inside from here, um, along here, and these two. Leave off the top row anything that's going to be uh, interfacing with your, your uh, seat rails later. And we'll begin by upholstering the sides, um, the sides, the bottom, and the front of this component here. So now you can see that we have the inside of the uh, center console here um, upholstered. The way I start to do this is I start with the bottom cut to size. And then I just glue in the other pieces provided from the factory um, just like this. And then with a sharp razor blade, I'll cut it off at the edge along here. And that trims it perfectly to size and make sure everything is uh, 
correctly in position. Also, as you can see, I used a little bit of the scrap cutting off from uh, this bottom piece here and glued it up on this edge. And in order to do that, I uh, screw on this back plate just so that everything is properly in position. And I will also razor out um, the inside edge of that just so that you get a little bit uh, more coverage on this flange here and then save this extra little bit of cutoff. Um, we'll actually upholster the inside of this plate with just a little bit more um, along with our grommets here for our headphones to be able to pass through. So it's just, um, at this point, we're gonna put on the, uh, we'll, we'll cut everything off, then we're gonna put on the top and upholster the outsides, and uh, we'll get that done now. Okay, so once we've had our, the inside of the center console finished being upholstered, um, all the holes cut out for the headset jacks, uh, it's time to rivet on the top aluminum uh, plate, and then glue on your outer leather uh, piece here. So the way I like to do this is start by putting your adhesive up on the top here, getting the pre-made hole centered on the hole on the aluminum, and then gluing it down, and then working the glue down the edges here. Uh, don't worry about the inside here just yet. Uh, just glue it down all the way to the edge, and don't worry about the overhang. Uh, the next step is going to be to poke some holes through the leather here where it lines up with the holes and Clico on your seat rail like this. And then you can actually use the seat rail itself as a guide to trim out uh, the edge of the leather. So if this were Clicoed on, it would show a little bit cleaner, but you can use the, the seat rail itself as a guide to cut your leather. That way your seat rail is not pressed off your center console by the thickness of the leather. And also, there's no gap shown between the two of them. So it just kind of helps make everything be a nice, tight fit and finish. Um, then trim off the uh, edge of the leather out here and all the way around. Um, and then as you can see, I cut out the heads of the riv nuts. Uh, this allows the thickness of the leather actually comes to be exactly the same thickness as the head of the riv nut. So you're not going to get any, you know, uh, it's not going to push out your side panels once you do put them in. Um, and also because you didn't trim it off maybe at this step here, there's no chance for any kind of uh, aluminum showing between your center console and your other upholstered uh, pieces. Um, then once you've got all this done, you can put the a little bit more adhesive up on the top edge inside here. Uh, you may have to trim off a little bit of the flap on the front and the back to get it to fit properly. Um, and then you can kind of glue it up in and around and the finished product comes out looking very nice um, In addition to that you can see I've got edge protector around where the seat belts go through uh, This just helps prevent any kind of chafing to the seat belt over time and uh, Also just kind of helps polish up the finished look so there's no uh, trimmed ed leather edge there in addition to that you can see we've got the uh, the back plate for the center console um, finished with upholstering. Um, the way I like to do this is wrap it on the top and the sides. The bottom will be hidden by the carpet that it butts up to, so it's not as big of a deal. Um, but um, yeah, so this kind of, once again, helps hide any potential aluminum from showing through the edges there. And uh, then you put rubber grommets through each hole so that your headset jacks can pass through. And uh, this particular plane has a cigarette outlet here um, for 12 volt power. Uh, you could do USB or nothing. It's you know, up to you and what the needs of your plane are going to be. Uh, the next step is, as you can see in the background there, we've got an old soldering iron set up. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is take the tip of the hot soldering iron. Of course, this is not gonna be one that you're gonna solder with later and just burn through all of the holes so that it lines up and can attach. Um, burning through the holes as opposed to drilling uh, prevents any risk of, sometimes if you drill through the leather, it can twist and it'll pull the grain and kind of look twisted around that area. Also, it might not take off all the material. It'll just kind of like uh, do this type of thing around the hole. And uh, that makes it a little bit difficult to screw the, get the bolts through the holes. So. 
We'll now burn through all of these with the soldering iron and uh, assemble it and install the seat rails and this component will be done. Oh, also, we'll need to install the, uh, the top for the center console. Uh, the way we do that is basically the same thing. Burn through the holes where it mates up to, install it in with rivets, um, and then as you can see, we've countersunk these rivets here, and we'll use countersunk rivets to hold it down into position. So we'll get that stuff done now and uh, move on to upholstering some other things. So here's the center console um, completed for now. Um, as you can see, the uh, lid is on, the hinge is installed, and everything is centered up on the console. Um, the rails are riveted to the center console with the exception of the rearmost two rivets. Um, these rivet into the uh, center fuselage once it's permanently installed, so leave those out for now. Um, and like I was mentioning earlier, now you have a modular center console that can be installed to hold your flap actuator bracket and everything in place uh, when it's needed, but it's also easy to remove um, for access to your wires and everything as you're getting your avionics and your wiring harness installed. So um, for now, I'm gonna set this off to the side to keep the leather uh, well and protected out of harm's way and um, we'll install that later for final assembly.